Lead Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Singleton. And as a child of the 80s, I'd love to say queens rule, but they don't. Queens lead. Being a queen means you are worthy to be a leader of people. The guests on our show do exactly that. They are leading the way in their businesses, families, and communities. And they're taking their rightful place in the spotlight, leading and inspiring the developing queens in all of us. Welcome to the Queen's Lead Podcast. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Queen's Lead Podcast. Today, I am so excited to have Stephanie Laswell here. She is from Oklahoma City and she is a divorce coach. She is also a mother and a two-time divorcee. So she's got a lot of experience in the area. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely. We're so excited to have you. So tell us a little bit about Stephanie. Who are you? Oh, goodness. Um, this, this question gets me every time because like I have to, you know, wipe away all the roles and, you know, really focus on myself. I'm learning to do better. <laughs> um, I, first of all, am a believer. Um, I was raised in the church and, um, you know, God is my higher power. So I have that. Um, I love to work out. I love to get in the gym and push my body, push my mind, and sweat it out in the gym, but if I'm not in the gym, and I'm sweating, I absolutely hate sweat. (laughs) (laughs) You like it to be intentional sweat. (laughs) Yes, intentional sweat is great, yeah. That's um, it, that's it. Non-intentional sweat, I I despise. Um, (laughs) Kickboxing is probably my favorite um, cardio exercise, because I can punch a bag, and kick a bag, and get a lot of stress and, um, anger out. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so that's what I like to do physically. I am definitely learning how to take more time for myself. I think that is definitely hard as women, um, because we're wearing so many hats and I feel like there's so much pressure put on women. Yes. hundred (laughs) percent. Yes. Um, And so that has been a journey that I've been on, I would say for the last probably 12 months Um, and just learning. I don't know that this word is possible, but balance, what does that look like? I don't really know. Um, If you have an answer, please tell me. (laughs) No, no such thing. No such thing. It's always changing. Yeah. I'll stop trying to attain, um, reach that goal, I guess, in my life. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I love my children. Um, they are what gets me out of bed every morning. Um, and I'm really working to, uh, change legacies, I guess. And they're part of what motivates me. Um, and so, yeah, I just love people. I do really well in darkness. Um, I've had a lot of darkness to get through myself and it's, been a gift that I've embraced. I'm to the point of accepting it and embracing it. I, I will be honest, it didn't always come naturally for me to embrace my darkness. Um, but I do now. And there is definitely beautiful things that can come out of our darkness. And that's what I love to do and help people along their journey. I just seem to kind of like the calm in the storm, I guess, is yeah kind of how I am. So yeah, is that so, good? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. great. So, so yeah, I'm very unfortunately familiar with that type of darkness, I think. So tell me what led you, are, are you still uh, in real estate as well as divorce coaching or tell us what kind of led you through that transition from a uh, full-time real estate agent to yeah. divorce coach. And what does that look like? What, what yeah. motivated you to do that? Um, so I went through two divorces myself and there were things that happened in the process that I didn't necessarily fully understand the full impact of what was going to happen after the settlement papers were signed. And um, if I just had a little bit more education, (laughs) um, I would have understood more fully and I might have made a different decision on what I was asking for. Mm. Um, and not that it was like 
anything huge or that I couldn't work through. Thankfully, I had family that was very supportive and they walked through that process with me. But um, I came to see that there was a gap in the divorce process. Um, you usually have a mediator and a lawyer or something like that to kind of help walk you through those situations. But as you're going through a divorce, one of the big things that you lose is your thinking partner, right? Your spouse, the person right. that you kind of bounce ideas off of and, okay, what are we going to do about this? And what are we going to do about that? And there's not really that person mm. or mm -hmm. you're getting so many options or so many opinions thrown at you. And those aren't necessarily always the best things because people kind of come to you with, you know, their own hurt because divorce, there's a ripple effect and a lot of people are hurt in the process. Mm -hmm. And so you might not be getting the most solid, logical opinions of others. From like your pissed off sister who's mad at yeah. your ex. Or, yeah, no, <laughs> yes. I totally get that. Yes. Or someone who loved your ex and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's so um, smart. Because sometimes family cheers for the other side, right? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I just, you know, as I've gone along and, you know, my first divorce happened and then the recovery of that, and then my second divorce happened. And then, you know, that learning process, I just came to like, see this gap and say, this is a problem <laughs> that we need to fix. And yeah. I did, did my research and I was like, oh, there is actually something that can help. And um, this is a divorce coach to help you think about, okay, I want to keep my house, but what does that actually look like when it's said and done? What are the risks that I might be signing up for that I can't see? Because all I can see right now is making an emotional decision because this is the kid's home. Right. Right. And I don't want to, I want to be a part of that. I want to stay here, you know, for the sentimental reasons or what have you. And so, um, since I already did have my real estate license when I was going through my first divorce, there's just a sensitivity that I think comes with helping somebody walk through that because, you know, you might have a protective order that is involved in the divorcing process. You want to think about the kids and how they're trans, they're, um, how they're handling all of this, these moving parts and having to move you know, or be at a home, not as much as they used to be. And, you know, all of the things that it kind of takes a special touch. And, um, you know, a lot of times, if you're not trained in that, you just don't, you just blow by them. And you just look at the selling the house as you would any other house, right? Right. Or that process takes a little bit longer most of the time it does take longer and you've got to have a court order or actually, you know, be appointed by a judge. And so there's a lot of things that just a typical real estate transaction is different in the divorcing world, war, world, sorry. Um, and so that's part of where my passion came. It started with like helping the, the divorcing homeowner through the real estate process and then kind of finding out, oh, there's more to this and I can coach them a little bit more in their splitting of their assets and gathering all the paperwork for the lawyer and coming organized. So they're saving time and money with their lawyer um, before they even get to that point. Um, and then relieving the lawyer of some of those conversations that really aren't for them to receive <laughs> uh, <laughs> because yeah. they aren't, you know, they're not the counselor or, you know, they're not in that position to help be their thinking partner. They're there for the law aspect of it. And so I just kind of fill that gap. That's so interesting. So it started off by taking on real estate clients who were going through divorce. And then you thought, no, there's a need here. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what type of, did you obtain any type of a particular training on this? Or was it just straight up life experience that brought you? <laughs> well, the life experience was a huge one, but, um, yes, there are specialty designations that you can get as a real estate agent. And I've gone through that. Um, I also am, um, in the process of doing the, um, certified divorce coaching. And so there's actually a certification, for that as well. So it's like a, 
it's kind of like a life coaching, but it's definitely more specific towards the divorcee and what they're going through and, you know, that heavy, heavy process <laughs> that just yeah, seems to be a cycle sure. that, you know, some people get stuck in sometimes. And so um, helping them when they're thinking about the divorce while they're going through it and then a recovery plan for after. And I also have my life insurance license. So a lot of that has to do with a financial recovery plan um, because mm. divorce can be so devastating for so many people or maybe they didn't even know what was going on in their personal finances because they, you know, typically one spouse is more heavy on that than the other one. Um, and so just kind of, I guess my ultimate goal is just to help them, their recovery not take so long or not be so painful um, and ha not have such a big hit because they've got somebody walking with them that is consistent and an unbiased opinion, yeah. their cheerleader and can kind of help them think about, okay, what do I want my life to look like now? Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge, that's a hard time to be trying to navigate those decisions alone. Mm -hmm. Um would you say that most of the people you serve are women or is it a variety really? Yeah, it really is a, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do most of your clients are, do they start off as your real estate client or how are they, how are people finding you right now? Where are most of your divorce coach clients um, coming from? It's mostly online, um, on my social media, um, which is pretty much where I get most of any of my clients, however they come to me, um, mm -hmm. and then referral based. Um, you know, partnering with lawyers and pastors and counselors um, and things like that, you know, hairdressers, because usually they're the first ones that know. <laughs> yes. I, the more women I talk to, the more I find out, like we all have this niche, but in some way, shape or form, we're almost all counselors as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So what's your vision for this, for your business? What, where do you see this in five years, ideally? Oh goodness. I'm, I have no problem dreaming. I am such a visionary. Um, I love to dream up big things. <laughs> um, I have lots of different ideas. Um, having a brokerage specifically for divorce is one of my, um, ideas, you know, there are brokerages out there that deal in real estate that are focused on VAs, um, and kind of have, you know, like your, niche boutique real estate brokerages. And so I've thought about that. I've thought about um, starting a nonprofit that kind of, you know, help people um, that might not be able to afford services. Um, I mean, my mind goes everywhere, having online classes, um, you know, speaking engagements and events. So yeah, just however I can help. I'm really part of what I want to do is bring awareness and be a voice um, for the divorcee and help remove this like scarlet letter <laughs> um, that half of us are walking around with, um, whether it's self-inflicted or inflicted by others, it still <clears throat> seems to be, it still seems to be like a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's a lot <clears throat> wrapped up in that and um so I'm trying to solve that problem I'm trying to be the voice of your divorcing friend that might not tell you honestly and truthfully how they're feeling mm -hmm. because they're so hurt or they feel like they've been dropped um and it's like as soon as that I'm separating something happens in the tribe you know, it's not always, but more times than not, when I talk to people, um, their tribes just dis disintegrate. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've been there <laughs> like a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. And yeah, it's a problem. Your marital status shouldn't change how you're treated by people yeah. that love you or claim to love you and it's I hear I heard a lot well I didn't know what to say and I'm sorry but that's bullshit like yeah. we have to drop that and um that is not a reason to 
not continue to reach out to a friend when you see that they're missing because they're going through divorce. Um, mm -hmm. So that's part of, <laughs> that's part of my huge mission. Um, I'd like to help churches uh, figure out how to have a better pastoral experience for someone that's going through divorce, because that's also a big one that I hear, especially here in the Bible Belt, is how the divorcee is hurt or their faith suffers, and they don't ever step back into the church because of how they were treated during the divorce. It's also mm -hmm. not okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. not. No. The pastor of the church I attend is a divorcee. And it was a really tough situation for him to navigate and about half the mm -hmm. church left, but you know what, there, there's that solid core of people that, that get it, um, mm -hmm. that I think can help. I, I'm very similar in that situation where nobody knew what to say to me. I didn't know what to say to others because my, uh, as you have obviously un unraveled that every situation is so unique. It's not always, well, he cheated and I'm pissed and we're divorcing mm -hmm. and that's it. it. It's not ever that cut and dry. There's so much more and so much more hurt there to uncover. So mm -hmm. take us through your, take us through your process. What does it look like if, if Amy calls Stephanie and says, I'm getting a divorce and I don't know what to do. What does it look like mm -hmm. to be your client? Um, so the first step would be to have a discovery call. And basically I'm just going to sit there and listen to where you're at, what obstacles you're facing. Um, if you do have an idea of where you would want to go, um, that's what I would ask you. A lot of times people don't know yet. Uh, if they are facing something that's coming up immediately, like they're about to prepare for mediation and they're having anxiety about that. Um, just, I just kind of let them I would say like, Amy, just tell me what's going on right now. And, you know, just kind of let you lay it all out there. And then I, as you're talking to me, I'm going to be identifying kind of in my mind, like a, um, a sketch of how I feel like I could help you through that. Um, and I would give you some ideas and you know, would it help if we did a role play of what your mediation is going to look like or, would it help if um, we could work on getting you your resume complete so you can go out and start, you know, searching for jobs because you know that that's coming up. And so I would, you know, I would see how I can help you walk alongside of you and give you that support and a little bit of accountability, but also cheer you on and be like, you know what, this isn't going to last like this forever. And we're going to get you to where you want to go. And so just kind of bringing you hope and encouragement and um, kind of being your rock because your rock has been shaken. <laughs> Great. Yeah, hundred percent. And the other yeah. rocks that were supporting roles of that rock, it, sometimes they fall away for a time because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't share from in my situation. I couldn't share my whole story right up front. Mm -hmm. it, it was his information to share, not mine, the mm -hmm. reason for our divorce. So, so that looked really hard. So yeah, I can yeah. see where having you as just a sounding board mm -hmm. is super helpful. Yeah. Do you Didn't bring me like, talk, oh, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to say, it sounds like that you may be helping to identify and partner your clients with other experts who may mm -hmm. fill the role of, you know, maybe resume builders, or maybe you do all that work on your mm -hmm. own. But I mean, are you sometimes uh, being that resource guide? Like, mm -hmm. I know a person for this. Mm -hmm. I know a person for that. Let me partner you with those and then work together collaboratively through that. Yes, absolutely. I'm huge about collaboration and um, this is what I do well, but I know this, um, business over here they do this really well like there's a local um business that actually they are um why did my mind just go blank um, a job placement company but specifically oh. for moms so they know how to you know pull out skills and you know things that moms do but haven't necessarily been paid for them and help yeah. that look really you know really good on a resume so mm -hmm. um yeah, I definitely have my power partners <laughs> in the community yes. that, because I, I vet them because I want to make sure that I'm handing out referrals that I know that they're going to be well taken care of. Um, yeah. that's really big for me. So, yeah, that's a, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you want to turn your valuable client over to someone who's going to drop the ball for sure. So, yeah. um, 
So you mentioned a nonprofit in your future. Are you mm-hmm. currently involved in any kind of, I know you're involved with your church. Are you involved in mm-hmm. any kind of um, nonprofit or philanthropy work currently, or are those just aspirations for the future? Um, so I do have a background in nonprofit work. I help, um, I did help my former church start their nonprofit, but yes, um, Real Single Moms is here local in Oklahoma. And um, they do some of the same things like helping connect to resources and, you know, they take a very holistic approach to how they embrace moms and help them, um, you know, figure out how to be a single mom, you know, (laughs) and, you know, they, you know, they embrace anybody that comes to their door and just, um, they have events and get togethers and all kinds of great things. And so I'm a part of that nonprofit right now. So yeah, I love nonprofit work. Real single moms. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. And, um, I just believe in the work that nonprofits do. I think they change the world. <laughs> so yeah. I'll always be a fan of nonprofits. <laughs> yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. I We can't all focus on every single thing that's important to us. So having those nonprofits that are so niche specific to serve mm-hmm. the communities that they serve is, I love it. I love to see mm-hmm. it happening. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, uh, what else? <clears throat> What is something, what's a piece of advice you would give to our listeners that are thinking about, um, that are thinking about getting into business for themselves? What have some of your challenges been um, and how did you navigate those with starting this? Um, goodness, the challenges of being your own boss lady. There are so many. <laughs> oh, so many. Um, I, I think that would be it. Like go in with eyes wide open. It's not going to be as pretty as Instagram makes it. <laughs> and, um, right. Just, I would say like, I know that you're going to be very excited and passionate about your idea that you have for your business. And that is amazing. I think if I could do it over again, I might be a little bit more cautious on who I share my dream with. Um, Mm. I think that I would vet my supporters, (laughs) um, and who I tell a little bit better because when you're building your business, it takes a lot of energy out of you and you're going to only want positive energy in your sphere while you're going through your business building. And I think just being realistic about what it takes practically to start a business, like it's just you in the beginning. And until you work up and you scale, you're not going to have a lot of support. And so that means like you're it and you're doing long hours, you're getting up earlier. Like you have to figure a lot of things out on your own because you don't have necessarily, I would say most of the time, probably, you're not going to have the resources to hire the help out immediately. (laughs) At least that was my case. And so just an eyes wide open and make sure that you're getting good, solid support from, you know, either a mentor or a business coach, you know, just a small group of people that can support you through it because it's, it's a lot. And I, I think that if you have somebody that's been there before, whatever your situation is. Like if you're a business owner and you're also a single mom and you're trying to do it all, like make sure that you find a single mom, not a male. (laughs) That's not a single parent that doesn't understand all that you're going through. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Surrounding myself with myself. (laughs) Sometimes it feels like there's multiple of me. I wish there were. (laughs) right? <laughs> Less in the personality department. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Surrounding yourself with those cheerleaders and supporters is so important. And someone who's done mm-hmm. it, who's, who's maybe not done exactly what you've done before, but mm-hmm. have done, has walked that road and, and can give you those pointers. But, mm-hmm. you know, for me, like you got to embrace those haters though, because you're going to get haters. That's how, you know, you've made it is you got some mm-hmm. haters. There's people that are mm-hmm. going to hate on what you're doing, but keeping your eyes wide open and, and tapping into those resources that can be those cheerleaders and mm-hmm. encouragers for you is so, so important. Cause it does, it gets, yeah. you get down in the dumps, man. It's like, Oh, I'm yeah. doing all this on my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally feel it. Yes. <laughs> what about, what about, um, what about our divorcees? What about someone who's 
contemplating divorce, thinks maybe it's impending or is in the middle of it right now. What's a takeaway that you can give these men or women um, who are there? Yeah. Um, it's not going to be like this forever. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. And if you are in the dark side of it, it, there will be light. And if you're in the light side of it, there probably will be dark. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes you have a situation where the relief, you know, like I'm so relieved I'm out of that situation. And things are going along real good and real smooth. And then wham, it hits you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Managing and expectations then, are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sometimes you're just devastated and, you know, the darkness comes on first and it's heavy and there's a lot. And I would just encourage you, don't get stuck there. Like, reach out for help. Whenever the darkness hits, don't try to manage it and get through it on your own. That's yeah. one of the things that I feel like I did because it was, I'm the oldest of three girls. You know, I was the most responsible. Um, I just did what I needed to do. You were <laughs> you talking to me. me. Yeah. I yeah. Told you that yeah. So yeah. Much. <laughs> it's just like, pull your boots up by the strap and just like forge ahead and you know that really that really hurt me and um I think it caught it I I got stuck for a long time um and that's just not a good place to be in and sometimes we need people to reach down and pull us up out of that muck and it's okay like there are plenty of us <laughs> that have been through this before you don't need to do it by yourself. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I feel, I feel so in line with things, everything you just said. That's mm -hmm. so true, guys. Listen up. Like, it's not going to last forever. The, the it's been over ten years since my divorce, and there was a time that uh, that I nearly took my own life many mm -hmm. times when I isolated and didn't reach out for that help because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like anyone knew me, that no one had been where I was. And, and I think it's important for us to also recognize that even though we have a unique story, there are others who have lived that exact same unique story. They're out there and, and, and having a resource like you to walk us through and say, you know what, here's an example of this person who's been here and here's where he or she is now is, mm -hmm. is so helpful. And so it's something that I really could have used during that time in my life <laughs> instead of taking mm -hmm. the 10 years to get over it and figure it out on yeah. my own. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I look back and I like, I wasted so much time, like yeah. so much time, but also like you have to go through the morning process. Yeah. And you have to understand that sometimes it's going to hit you out of nowhere. And I don't think people realize like how long that process can be. And if you don't embrace it and get through it in the beginning, then it could haunt you later and cause more problems for you down the road in a new relationship. That would be the other thing I would say, please, for the love of all of us, do not rush into another serious relationship. Right. <laughs> they, yes, please do not do that because no matter how good you feel right now, I promise you have not healed. This is divorce is traumatic. Whether you want it or don't, whether you've been done for a long time and you checked out a long time ago, it is still traumatic. It's a huge loss. Um, and you need to take time to heal and grow and take responsibility and figure out who you are now without that label. Um, and that takes time, friends. <laughs> yes, it does. Intentional time, not out being wild and crazy and filling that void. I yeah. promise it will just bring more chaos. I am a living example of that. And so take time. I really say like a year to 24 months is they usually say about two years for somebody to come out of the crazy time of divorce. Um, and I didn't do that. And I wish that I would have. Yeah, 
And not just the time, like the length of the time, but the work that they're doing during mm -hmm. that time. Don't you think that mm -hmm. comes into it? Oh, absolutely. Because you can say that you're going to counseling, but are you digging deep? Are you like also self-reflecting on that? Are you taking time for self-care? Are you taking time to grow and know yourself? Um, and reevaluate, like, what do I want now? Like, I have to let this go and say goodbye to this and mourn this. And I really think a big part of the mourning process that we don't always have permission is even if it was bad, there was still good or you wouldn't have been in that relationship. Right. And especially with my second marriage, it was hard for me to do that because of that. Um, it wasn't all bad, but I felt guilty for missing the good parts because of how, how bad the bad parts were. Mm, yeah. And so I would say, like, I give you permission <laughs> to, you know, still have good feelings about that person or that marriage that you had, even though there was also bad. You can hold space in yourself for both. Mm. But you also need to be very real with yourself about the boundaries that you have and the beliefs and the values that are important to you so that you're not repeating the same situation as you go into a new relationship. Um, so I think that's kind of, that was a lot. <laughs> we, no, so a it's lot. so valuable. That's so valuable. I wish that I, that someone had been there to tell me that because I felt like I needed to hate him. I really wanted to hate him so bad for what I felt like he did to me and mm -hmm. taking my responsibility in the situation, even though from the outside looking in, it, it seemed like I had none really. Mm -hmm. I did. I had some responsibility mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I now have a wonderful relationship with my ex and, and my current husband and, um, and yeah, there is room for loving that part of yourself and where mm -hmm. you were and taking value from that experience, mm -hmm. even though it ended traumatically or awfully, or, or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you do hate them forever, but there were good parts. There had to have been, or you wouldn't have been yeah. there. Yeah. 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 And I think forgiveness comes into play there. And it's mm -hmm. not just about forgiving the other party. It's about forgiving yourself. And that's mm -hmm. one that I got hung up on for a very, very long time is, you know, the the self-inflicted shame the shame that i felt from other people the regret the embarrassment you know like i was just like piling it all upon myself and probably taking a little bit too much responsibility i think we can do that too is take on too mm -hmm. much responsibility um and so you do you have to forgive yourself like okay, I did X, Y, and Z. I see how I contributed this in the future. I'll do this just like you would apologize to somebody, you know, yeah. as a toddler or whatever. I'm sorry. I took your cookie. That's <laughs> my fault. <laughs> Will you please yes. forgive me? Like you have to have that conversation with yourself, um, until you feel free until you can say, I did this. I've learned from it and I'm going to do better next time. And I love myself then. And I love myself where I'm going and I'm excited about how this experience is making me a better person. Yeah. I love it. Is there a success story from a client that you'd like to share anonymously, obviously, or your own mm -hmm. kind of success story of um, yeah. maybe a client you've worked with and what they looked like before they worked with you and how they look now? Um, I, I mean, I hear so many beautiful stories. Um, I also have a podcast and that's what the main thing is, is like, how have you taken your ashes and turned it into something beautiful? Like that's the mm. theme of it. Mm -hmm. So there have been so many stories that I've heard. Um, and I think just from my own experience, it is, um, I just love different now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's just a different, more mature kind of love and um, a lot more compassion, a lot more compassion because of all of the things that I've experienced since I first got married when I was 22. And now, you know, oh goodness, 22 years later, I just realized that. <laughs> I said that out loud. <laughs> um, like I'm just a different person and I wouldn't be this person if I hadn't gone through my two divorces. 
And now it's such, my divorces are a gift, you know, a -hmm. gift that I get to help other people. Like this isn't the end, your story's not over. And we're just starting a new book, you know? And we've got like a lot, you know, like a volume is, is your life. Like it doesn't end here. And I just, I think divorce just hits people so hard. Um, mm-hmm. I did have a friend that said, I have been a widow and I have gone through a divorce. And by far the hardest one with my mourning process was the divorce. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that we have a lot of people out there sharing their stories to the level of where the general public understands how devastating mm-hmm. divorce is. Mm-hmm. And oh my so, God. I love that you have a podcast for this. Um, first of all, is it all, is your podcast <laughs> surrounding all divorcees and their stories? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. um, you know, general, just everyday folks that have been through divorce and then also professionals that work with them and, um, just, like, how can we change this whole conversation to where we're loving each other better? Um, we're supporting the divorcee better. We're not ghosting our friend that stops responding to us when they're in the middle of a divorce and we stop chasing them. Well, they're not, they're in a place where they need you to chase them. Yes. Um, and you, you've got to get out of your own way. This isn't time to be selfish and you know like we're playing high school games again because the divorcee is going through complete identity crisis yes Yes. on top of financial devastation on top of like so many things there's so many layers to divorce yeah it's a super complicated process thank you so much for shining a light on this Mm -hmm. and i'm so thrilled and honored to shine a light on you so that you can continue to shine a light on this need. Tell, tell our listeners where they can find you. If you are thinking about divorce in the middle of a divorce at the beginning of a divorce, uh, think you might need a divorce, um, are in the process of trying to sell your home due to a divorce. Mm -hmm. Stephanie is the person you need to talk to. Tell them how they Mm -hmm. get to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can find me on Facebook or I guess we're now calling it meta. I don't really know, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, Instagram. I am, my personal account is Stephanie Marie Laswell and my business account is the divorce life. Um, if you'd like to tune into my podcast, it is ashes to beauty. Um, and it is, po- it is produced by, Breaking Ice, Building Bridges by Possibilities, Inc. Um, And that's on Spotify and Apple. But feel free to pop into my DM. Um, The first conversation we have, there is no charge. And then, you know, if you feel like we want to work together and it's a good fit, then we can talk about what those different packages look like. Each one's kind of individually done and um, to what everybody's need is so different, you know, (laughs) so. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. We appreciate you. You guys go check out our podcast, Ashes to Beauty. Check her out at The Divorced Life uh, on Instagram and Facebook and Stephanie Marie Laswell on Facebook. And uh, thank you guys. uh, Thank you all so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. (laughs) 